Now, why am I taking all this time to uh, talk about this right after I talked about COVID? Because last spring, I kind of got thrown into the, uh, uh, into the fire um, uh, to try to help figure out what was going on with COVID. And we got autopsy tissue from people who died of COVID. And um, we looked deep at the ultra structural level. We, fought, we saw that the coronavirus actually not only infects the lungs, it infects um, the blood vessels as well. So now I want to share with you something that very few people have seen, um, uh, although we did publish it in the New England Journal of Medicine. But on the left-hand side is a normal healthy lung with the beautiful blood vessels, that waist-like network. And if you squint, you can almost see that those blood vessels are uh, surrounding an air pocket. So when we breathe in, the oxygen goes into that air pocket, that bubble, and then it gets absorbed by our blood vessels. And those blood vessels, 60,000 mile channel, delivers that oxygen to all the cells in our body. Now, one of the things we found when we actually looked at COVID is that is on the right-hand side here. Infection by COVID, where the coronavirus infects the blood vessels, not just the lung, but the actual blood vessels of the body, they'll, they'll destroy the blood vessels. And this is why we wind up having these microthrombosis or tiny little blood clots. This is happening in the brain, in the heart, in the limbs, in the toe, in the kidney, everywhere. And when, we, when I saw this and we published it in the New England Journal of Medicine, it suddenly sent up a, a red flag that this of all reasons is the reason is why you don't want to get COVID. You don't want to get it and get it over with because we believe that to some extent, this kind of damage is happening in everyone. Now, fortunately, blood vessels can repair themselves. As I showed you, you know, the body kind of is able to get back to where it needs to be. But for some people, it doesn't recover. Now, these are pictures on the right-hand side from somebody who died of COVID. So this is the end stage. Now, uh, before people die, though, I want to show you, we actually looked at blood vessels in living people. So on the left, um, is a, a lung, set of lungs of, of, of a perfectly healthy person. We've studied a thousand of them. Um, and what we're able to do is use a CT scan and slice by slice reconstruct all of their blood vessels. Red is tiny blood vessels, yellow is medium size, blue is larger blood vessels, remove all the other lung tissue. Now you're just left with blood vessels in the lung. And we can actually rotate this in 3D. It's you know pretty cool. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of like the Jurassic Park of, of lungs. You can actually you know, get these um, really beautiful models. And on the right-hand side, you can see what COVID does. This is a, pa a patient who actually had acute COVID, didn't die, not yet. And you can kind of see you've the, the virus is completely trashed and, and, and inhibited, destroyed some of these tiny, small blood vessels. So this is not just in people who died, but even people who suffered um, and, and people who were short of breath, continue to be short of breath. Now, fast forward from March to April and May when we were doing this work over to July, August, September, now we we're seeing people who had recovered from COVID six months before, three, six, nine months before, and now they're still short of breath. When they, are they go to their doctor, the physical exam looks fine. They're moving their air, uh, they feel, they sound like they're moving air in their lungs. They get a chest x-ray, looks fine. They get a CT scan, also looks fine. We take a look at the CT scan. And, and if you actually squint at the middle, this is a long-term COVID uh, survivor, you can kind of see it's not quite as good as the left-hand side, not as bad as the right, but still not quite recovered yet. Now, this is what long COVID, long-term COVID, we, we understand is happening in some of these patients with um, like the long haulers with long COVID, or now it's called uh, post-acute sequelae of COVID. But if you were to take a look at this picture, you still wouldn't actually know exactly how bad the damage was. So let me show you, we can actually go in with the computer and count the blood vessels. So on the left-hand column, is the three sizes of blood vessels. Less than five is tiny, five to 10 is middle, yellow. Um, the red ones are the small ones and the greater than 10 are the blue ones. And because we've studied a thousand lungs, we can kind of compare using that very patient I just showed you a slide ago in the middle. Um, what percent of normal blood vessels were present in long hauler, long COVID? Okay, so with the tiniest blood vessels, those red ones, only less than 50% of, of, of normal. In the middle one, less than almost 80% deficient, only 20% of normal. And of the larger ones, I'm missing 70%, only 30%. So I'm actually in the middle of that to try to figure out what can actually be done uh, to try to help pre prevent this, to treat this, and also to help people recover. And one of the big questions is, can we use diet? Can we use angiogenesis to really try to help people recover? So um, there's also um, additional complications where long COVID people's teeth are falling out. Uh, this is actually from a patient advocate whose son um, had a tooth fall out completely. Um, and it turns out that 
uh, in the gum of the tooth are blood vessels and nerves, and it's rich with that receptor that the coronavirus likes to infect right those blood vessels right in the mouth. We actually know that, that that's another place um, that's affected by um, COVID. Now, one of the interesting things is uh, our, our body also has the ability to regenerate itself from the inside out. So when we were kids, we were taught that starfish and salamanders can regenerate, but people can't, right? Wrong. Turns out that that chapter has been ripped out of the textbook and thrown away. The new chapter says that humans can regenerate pretty slowly but we, our organs, our hair, our skin, our gut lining, our lungs, our liver, can, and even our brain can actually regenerate. Now, how does it regenerate? It uses stem cells, not the kind you go to a strip mall for a clinic and pay cash to get injected into your, um, uh, your, your, uh, your knee. Um, it's the kind that actually comes in our bone marrow. It lives inside the middle of our bone marrow. And when there's an injury or when we need to be, have our organs repaired, these stem cells come flying out of our bone marrow to repair us and regenerate, renew us from the inside out. So this is called regenerative medicine. This is a starfish. I've been working in this field for almost 30 years. I told you these are the organs that do regenerate. Um, and we know that if you actually have an injury, so this is a study out of Italy of 25 people that had pretty serious burns. They went to the emergency room. In the emergency room, they actually um, um, drew their blood to look at how many stem cells on the vertical axis they found in their bloodstream at any given time. And then they admitted the patients into the hospital and they followed them over the course of a month or so, 30 days. And you can kind of see as the patients were healing over the course of a month, more and more and more and more stem cells are called out to help regenerate and heal that tissue until about day 12. And then about halfway through the stem cells start coming back down as a regeneration um, that, that, they, that was needed to be done was complete. So this is actually showing you in a human study. And again, this is biotech um, this type of action. Um, this is how we would study regenerative medicine, stem cell therapy uh, for um, treatment of burn. And by the way, same type of, of biotech stuff, the worse the burn, go up the vertical axis, you have more and more surface area burn. On the horizontal axis, the more the burn, the more stem cells come pouring out. The body knows how to recover, how to repair itself, how to regenerate itself. So this is really important. The problem is that as we get older, our stem cell activity is lost. And this is really the reason why people go into regenerative medicine, why biotech companies are trying to do this is diseases of aging, not the brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerves, heart, limb, you know, after a stroke, after a heart attack, heart failure, um, kidney failure, can we regenerate organs? big um, uh, muscle mass. So lots and lots of um, biotech uh, questions and enthusiasm for this. But what's interesting is that food can also stimulate your stem cells in a way that frankly, we don't have the medicines to do yet. So this is actually um, uh, from uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, Central America. This is the cacao pod. Cacao is a fruit that actually is responsible for uh, cacao nibs or coca, which is made, used to make chocolate. And so dark chocolate we know is good for our health. And it turns out that um, dark chocolate's been studied. It's a flavanol. And if you take high flavanols, dark chocolate, 80% or higher, and you make it into hot chocolate and you give it to, in this case, um, uh, men in their 60s who have known heart disease. Okay, so you give it to men with known heart disease, bad circulation, and you measure at the beginning of the experiment, the study, the research study, um, their stem cells, you can kind of see they all kind of cluster together, those little red dots, 16 subjects. And then you send them home, you give them two cups of hot cocoa a day. Uh, and uh, this is the dark, um, uh, dark chocolate, really dark chocolate. And then you see how they do a month later, you measure how many stem cells came out. You can see up to doubling of their stem cells, um, all made by hot cocoa. That's the only thing that happens. So uh, and so the question is, well, okay, that's fine. You showed there's more cells in the blood. That make a difference at all? Absolutely. So they actually did a, a, a clinical test called flow mediated dilation, where they actually did a blood pressure cuff and they with an ultrasound probe. And what, guess what they found? Those people who actually had the hot cocoa had better circulation, better adaptive resilience to their blood vessels and their blood flow after a month of having hot cocoa. So food as medicine in the same type of clinical design that we use um, to look for um, uh, regenerative medicine. 
And what about public health? This is the study of 20,000 people um, uh, from Germany that showed that those who ate seven and a half grams of chocolate um, a day had a lower risk of cardiovascular disease by quite a substantial uh, amount. So this is the whole series of foods that stimulate uh, angiogenesis. You can read about them more in my book. Um, that's another defense system. <laughs>